and they they hurry to, to code the application as quickly as possible, but they often uh, forget that uh, applications tend to have a long life cycle, and they will eventually, if the application is successful and they actually find users, they have to maintain it through the entire uh, cycle of, of the application, and usually they have to make changes to, to code which they don't understand after a year or two. So this is something which uh, might not be a, that obvious at the beginning, but it's a part of the overall efficiency of your development process. That's clear. If you if you work on some static, uh, uh, application from the past, you cannot work on something else. Another one uh, which sounds obvious, uh, you if your application is getting complex and you have many layers, it's similar to, to the editors, uh, if you try to make any refactoring and you don't have a good tools for that, you might sometimes forget to modify modify a certain part of the application and um, you might not be in a consistent state anymore and you get uh, angry users because some parts of the application are not working correctly. Uh, in a large scale, that means don't leave any uh, time bombs in your code. Uh, try to try to make your application as as clear as possible because it will save you time not just now but in the future as well. And this is probably the the most important uh, from this series of pictures. Uh, you should strive to use the uh, right tool for the task. Uh, and if, if you have a, a good tools, you usually are more effective. So I think uh, we spent some time uh, just talking very in very general terms. Let's go into a concrete uh, concrete example. Uh, and because it's the first one, uh, it will be a very, very simple example and we get uh, slightly uh, into details. And we move to the more complex examples later on. So for that example, I choose a very simple class. You probably everybody knows uh, it's for logging. And if you look at the documentation, there are two two pieces which are recommended practice for how to use a logger. Uh, you define that uh, tag which is usually uh, a name of the class which you uh, did use to find a uh, message in the, in the stream of the logs. And wouldn't that be just better if you said uh, typing that, uh, that part uh, describing your class and let the system handle that for you automatically. Well, uh, actually, you can you can write it quite easily for yourself. Uh, let's have a look what's inside of that such a such a method. Uh, it's not complete uh, implementation, uh, but I'll give you an uh, idea. The first thing you have to get a stack trace element, which is uh, that we we write an exception which give us this this guy here. Then we look through the elements and basically just get uh, a name of a corresponding uh, Java file or corresponding class. And we get exactly the same what you have to provide every time, but it's done automatically for us. There are some uh, performance consequences, but because you can shortcut uh, anything you don't want at any particular moment, those are not as drastical as you, you see, but uh, it just helps you save bunch of characters every time and this is just one tiny example how you can be more productive by, by writing a bit of code at the beginning but uh, you reap uh, the benefits for the rest of your programming life. Uh, I think uh, time to move back to, to the uh, more general, general uh, discussion uh, about efficiency. Uh, Probably the most important tool is uh, integrating uh, development environment. This is really <coughs> for me. This is the best tool I can bring up. Uh, modern uh, software can do a lot for you, like a refactoring uh, can can provide you uh, a lot of nice features, uh, which uh, would take uh, tedious stuff out of your your hands, and you can concentrate on, on being creative. And probably the most important issue uh, uh, the EDE can do for you 
uh, is to find find a many bucks for you. Uh, this is really uh, the most critical uh, most critical part. You can see that um, you type something and and it gets compiled on the behind and in you see you see uh, underscore that, that this part of code won't compile, so you, you don't even have to run compiler. So this is this those are important features. And uh, at a compilation time you can you can discover a lot of errors which would otherwise uh, flag your your life later. And you should try to to write your code in a way uh, which um, makes this work be possible for, for the for the compiler. Uh, and one of uh, one of the, the reasons which might make it problematic if, if you uh, depend on something which is not part of the programming language, like uh, some sort of string binary. Uh, if you attended any uh, any programming lessons in the university, uh, you usually hear that that you strive for uh, obeying the object-oriented principles and encapsulating your data is one of them and this is this is difficult to do if you're not using just a programming language so have a look at the common uh, pattern which uh, is claimed is used in Android everywhere uh, it's called MVC well, it stands for model view controller which is clear but there's something wrong uh, with the implementation in Android if you look at that, that guy in the middle changed a bit because the top model is usually written in Java, the controller is written in Java, but the guy in the middle is typically uh, XML layout, which is a, a foreign language. And, um, well, there are a lot of consequences. Probably don't have time to go into too much detail, but uh, you have to write a couple of layouts. Uh, you might have uh, the problem with, with the consistency, you sometimes forget uh, to, to change something in, in that array of layouts. Uh, you cannot really nest them together because then you have uh, performance problems. Uh, and it's problematic, you can usually write a single application with those, but it's very problematic to reuse your code later on, which is something which is like a core of the programming. You should reuse your code even if you, if you take some more time at this time and save some time in the future, it's exactly the same as the example I showed you <coughs> the first time. So be careful with uh, with XML because you know what it is. It's a, a tool for uh, for transport of data. Uh, it does a great job, but it's not as as good tool for for uh, expressing the logic. And every time if I see uh, a for loop uh, coded with an XML, I think something is not, not just right. So be careful with that. And don't let uh, XML become a, a violent alien trying to hunt you. Uh, another uh, another uh, thing, I'm, I'm not really a, a big fan of XML uh, in, the, in the programming. Uh, you have a danger that you have to type a very strange characters like those sharp brackets which are difficult to do with your fingers and that's actually a real uh, disease which is kind of dangerous and it can be really bad for your, for your health so I talk a bit about uh, um, problematic areas and it wouldn't be fair for me not to give you uh, an alternate approach so this is something which we'll talk about uh, in the next section. Uh, for me, other alternative uh, is use uh, a native solution which will fit into the MVC, and we try to, to have a look how how difficult it is uh, to implement your views in, in Java. For that, we have to reuse this view group class. I don't know, hopefully, some of you familiar with, uh, let's go into some, some details. If you override this class, <coughs> you get uh, empty uh, implementation. It's something about the detail of some player name and number of jersey. Uh, so you, you think you just uh, put something into constructor. So 
or doing something like this, a couple of, of uh, GUI elements, and, and you just build them, then uh, you nicely uh, implement on layout. Again, it's just simplified. It's probably not, not a real application, but it's good for this example. And you, you think you, you could go, well, not, not quite, quite ready. Uh, your application won't do anything at this point. Uh, you learn that the, the, the cryptic uh, API, even if uh, it's not, not necessary, uh, the only uh, method you have to uh, overwrite on layout, but you also have to provide on measure, which might be even more tedious than on layout. You basically have to measure all the components and then lay, it, lay them out again. And if you complete all of this, uh, you realize this is quite a lot of Java code, right? But um, Java, uh, in this case, is a problem, but it also is a, a solution because Java programming language is great for providing solutions. And uh, our, our tool, which can uh, make our work easier here, is, is using a reflection. So uh, let's have a, a look at the second uh, iteration of this. Now we're using a um, magical uh, group called Auto View Group, which is uh, in turn using uh, another magical group called View Group Helper. And you see that there is pretty much nothing left in there because everything is handled by this View Group Helper. So you probably wonder what's inside and uh, how the magic works. It's uh, actually quite simple. Let's have a look at uh, how the constructor works. It loops through all the uh, fields of the particular class. Uh, you get the, the list of fields uh, through the reflection. <coughs> and you look at those which are descendant of a view, so they are the visual groups, and uh, you build them for, um, for the class automatically. So the, the creator of the uh, program still has to, to construct all non-visual uh, constructs because they might not be trivial. But those visual usually just need a context. We've seen that in the previous talk. This, this is something which can be handled by compiler, or in this case, uh, by a little utility class. And it just builds uh, a default constructor for, for you and, and you down. So you can skip this. Pretty much, uh, you get, uh, you, you get uh, such uh, class. You see there, there is a lot of uh, a lot of warnings or suppressed warnings necessary because those uh, those uh, variables seem not to be never never constructed, but they are handled by the auto view group which I've seen before. And if you are if you are happy with the default behavior view done, if you need more more control, like to say, hey, I, I don't want uh, this particular property be handled uh, by the system. I want to construct it myself, or I want to measure it myself, you just put some annotation to it, skip it from, from the default and provide pro probably some, uh, some uh, extra parameters uh, to get the custom, custom function functionality you want. So use uh, a default whenever it fits and don't care about it and, and only modify what's important for you. So this is uh, part of the second example and, and we learn a lot of principles, what can make your uh, work of uh, designing a user interface on Android more effective, more productive. So we are ready to go to uh, to a next level uh, because there might be cases where uh, even this level is not enough and you feel that you're still uh, typing too much stuff which can be handled for you, especially if you are just looking for some sort of simple solution and uh, there's still a lot of different layers and you still feel that uh, you don't really want to uh, to deal with uh, providing uh, parameters at, at those various levels so uh, I realized that there is there is a space in this area for some some extra, extra effort and we came up with a solution we call framework object forms which basically helps you completely automate the creation of, of UI uh, from your model class and still uh, retain all the flexibility uh, for you if you need it. So 
Uh, we call this approach model view controller where view and controller is in bracket because the model, model is a driver. You get uh, the rest of the functionality from the model directly if you are happy with the default behavior. But view and controller is there, it's accessible for you and you can modify it uh, anytime you need any extra changes to, to that uh, default behavior. So um, probably time to go for some concrete example. Uh, I choose because it's effective, so let's let's write a complete application. And I, I choose as an example, uh, everybody loves to get paid, so let's write an application for sending invoices to your customers. It will be very quick. Uh, so we have something like class invoice, which has uh, probably, just keep it very simple, has a ID, which each invoice needs to have an ID. And we have already our first version of application. You see there is just a getter. So the framework guess uh, that you only want a read-only uh, property. And you don't really have to care about uh, the actual component use on the GUI. You just provide a feature. And there is text view which can have one features for you. You don't have to care about anything. But you need somehow to get the value in there. So you create a, a business method called generate, which will generate the ID and, and put it into, into uh, the model behind that. <coughs> and if we run it, we see there is no change because the framework don't know anything about the generate method. We just we just code it. And you need a little modification. You put uh, an annotation to it. Uh, which uh, tells our intention that we want this piece of code to be called from the UI and the system uh, in turn creates a nice button with the label we specify in the annotation and uh, every time we click the button on the UI this method get called and called and uh, um, the volume of value we got from, from the create ID function is put into, into the field. So that was that was first interaction. Let's go for something um, slightly more complex to actually uh, show you the power behind that. So let's go. We need to send uh, the invoice to somebody. So let's go with person uh, object. Uh, let's assume that this is not our first application. So we had a person uh, class ready from the previous uh, project. We just copied it into our uh, new application. Again, very simple. There is a, just name and an email for now. And the application, uh, we go slightly back. You see that we put it into, into the invoice as a, as a member, member object. And uh, our framework loops through, through all uh, the variables uh, recursively. So it loops through uh, name and email and creates uh, a single, uh, single compote components the UI for all the properties in there. So you get you get nice functionality. And you can prepare the function to the person uh, and it, it is all encapsulated and ready to be used in a different uh, project and basically all you get is just this one of line we seen before. And you can have there uh, a lot of functionality for free. For example, you want to make sure that the email is actually uh, filled in and it's valid email address because you, you actually want to send it in with the guide. So you have to make sure that this is correctly filled in. So you only add another uh, pair of uh, annotations asking for that field not to be empty and, and check for, for the validity of email. And if you try to type something in, you get that functionality basically for free. If you think about it, uh, we use Java, but uh, we use it in a <coughs> more way than what is possible if you, if you use traditional XML. So Java can be more declarative than XML as well. So uh, we're done with the with example. So uh, probably one more explanation uh, how this compares the traditional development of Android application. Let's assume we have a, our business logic bar 
then we have that XML layout which we need to somehow bind together. So there is a third third box which is a <coughs> weird Java code which binds XML to, to Java and you have to write it every time. Uh, so it's complete loop and you never know if your application actually compiles because if you make any mistake in just one of those boxes or any changes in one of those boxes, uh, you are in a consistent state. So you hope that your application, your application uh, is actually working, uh, but you, you have to really work hard for that to make sure that you, you have a ready application. So you might need a bunch of iteration to, to get there. On the, the other end, you have the same uh, business logic, and it just asks them to generate the application for you. You have to write uh, more uh, of those modifications uh, if you want a uh, specific functionality from, from the code, but basically the application is almost ready for you. <coughs> a run and it's ready there. Uh, the framework is uh, be published in uh, in open source and uh, the GPL, and then there will be um, a commercial option if you don't want to publish your source code. Uh, we hope uh, that we will be able to to make it across platform. There is already a prototype. The same set of features can uh, create you uh, a web application uh, using uh, Google Widget Toolkit, uh, but it's still it's still far from from being uh, completed. And uh, there is a bit of hope that we'll, with using the uh, Google Java to uh, Objective C uh, converter, there is hope that we can bring the same code base for you uh, and create an uh, iOS application as well using this, this framework. But those are just a plan for the future. Uh, I probably can go into more details, uh, but there is a dedicated uh, web page about a framework, and uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, to answer any questions you I actually have about that. Because it seems that our time is no, no it's somebody's. somebody's <coughs> Anyway, we are we are nearing the, the end. This is this is the last uh, slide of, of uh, that slideshow, and this is my my most favorite one. Uh, I really like the, the albino lion. Uh, most of the species which are albino are are hunted one, but if you are powerful enough and if you if you uh, trust in your your power, it doesn't matter matter that you are different from the, the rest of the rest of the crowd and you just take uh, advantage of the power and, and uh, self assurance in your in your abilities and you can do stuff which the others can't. So hopefully uh, you like the book and we still have some time for uh, for the questions. I have here a t-shirt for Question which well, for the first one maybe. Uh, what about applying different styles, for example, for button text views uh, with this framework? Because uh, with XML it's pretty easy. We just uh, <coughs> take uh, some picture and we use it as a button. And uh, how it is done? Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's uh, uh, pretty much a similar similar way, and you use the the. Uh, use the mechanism I was just describing. If you're fine with the default, you just put there the label. There is just a generic uh, set of, of uh, modificators you can you can easily apply. If you want to change the label of the button, you get it easily. If you want to put uh, an image, there is another uh, annotation called resource, and you put there a resource. If you want a completely different behavior, uh, there is a complete uh, mechanism which is hidden uh, beneath the surface for the uh, level of demonstration. I had I had no time to go into the details, but there is something which is called factories. You can specify a factory for each component or or each property, and um, you can have a factory which will build 
your own special button for, for that class and, and you have a, a lot of uh, possibilities how to make sure that a certain set of features are produced by a special factory and those can be changed. So you can take a default button produced for you by the system <coughs> and just modify say background color or whatever size to fit you and this can be assigned to a certain uh, properties only. So it's similar, uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar to what you know as a cascading style sheet uh, in a web, but it doesn't rely on strings because I hate strings, uh, but it's a full Java solution. You can access it from Java code and, and what it Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. okay. <coughs> what about the performance of this solution because <coughs> we know that reflection is not very cheap to, to use in Java and I wonder if you uh, compared using traditional development like XML layouts versus this uh, automated via annotations and stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, love that question. Actually, uh, I had a different presentation, a uh, slightly different format where I specifically covered this because this is Typically, the first question I get from the audience ever I talk about this. Uh, so, uh, we'll probably find that the other presentation and I'll show you the slides for that. But, uh, just to answer quickly, well, there is a penalty for, for uh, reflection, but uh, think about a couple of, of stuff. First, we are talking about mobile applications. Uh, your UI is usually pretty small, and if it's not small, it's not a, a good thing because it's prob it probably says your your application uh, is a bad design at the first place. If you have a hundred of fields and you want to show them to the user, there is there is a big chance that your application won't be accepted. And it's not because of speed; it's because it's a bad application. Uh, so this is the the first thing which takes care about itself. Then there is uh, there is stuff that you. Uh, user don't care about the performance, he cares about perceived performance. So if you build your view in a background and you can just show it to him and entertain him in the, in the, in the middle in, in some way, he won't complain about speed. So there, there are ways how to deal with that because, yeah, the form takes uh, some time to create. But for typical form, which I've just uh, shown in that example, it will be just probably less than 200 milliseconds, so it's, it's all right. Usually it's all right. Could be even a couple of minutes, but it's in the case where your forms are really long. So, yeah. And uh, another thing which you have to take in account, this uh, here uh, is slow because of reflection, but parsing XML layout is slow because you're parsing a text field and uh, a text text input and they usually don't uh, cannot uh, you can't really express the layout in a single pass you sometimes nest layouts into each other and that was on my uh, another uh, another presentation I've shown an example of a linear layout how many loops you have to go through <coughs> to nest them together this is not fast either and you can see that they, they are uh, places where the performance is problematic Another uh, another idea worth mentioning because it's all Java and you only call on layout if you change uh, orientation, for example, from from layout to, to portrait, uh, you only change the layout or, or the, the layout method is called again. You don't have to rebind another layout because uh, in XML you have to have two layouts. So it, every time you change from the orientation, you basically have to re bind them and reread a layout again. So that takes time and that's critical. But this approach, uh, we use it for a major application, would be done for a client and show it to, to the Google guys in Google because they were just trying to bring a big application for tablets to the market. And we showed them the prototype. They said, how you done that? It's really quick, how you can, how you done that? Well, don't do things which are not necessary like reading layouts again. <coughs> Another question? I don't know how we are with time. Is it okay? Yeah, okay, so. Did you use your 
framework every time you develop for customers, or you make any exceptions? Uh, not, uh, not every time for the customers. There are parts like that blocking me mechanism I use everywhere because I just hate typing more than necessary. Uh, I use uh, features from the framework pretty much everywhere if I'm given the chance, but uh, depends on the customer. If they, if they already usually, uh, that's a quite typical scenario. They have an uh, application they done in house and they realize they cannot bring it to the market because it's too buggy or too complex or too whatever, and they want to rewrite it, but they insist on, on reusing it as much as possible. So this is not a good scenario. So you basically have to deal with the hell of a foreign code and try to optimize it. So this is probably not a good scenario. But if it's a good good match, then I try to, to use it or at least use some parts of it. But it depends. They are they are types of applications which are not really for the like games. Anybody else still dangling the, the red carrot of the t-shirt? <laughs> Some best answer. Oh, best question. Well, if it's not other case, I'd like to thank you for